So what we try to make do with a not great sound system and a pretty hot room. Uh, I was feeling real guilty because I actually had not read this book. And uh, fortunately, in Don't Start Booing, I was able to download it on my Kindle. And it's an incredibly fast read, lucky for me. And I, I'm really excited to be here because I think this is one of those organizing books. Uh, I don't know, have any of you read the book? Well, you've got to get it one way or another. Uh, and the re it's like Code Pink. Code Pink, you can see Code Pink is kind of these crazy people who show up in these things, cause disturbances and everything. But if you ever analyze their message, it's incredibly lucid fact-based and, of course, right. <laughs> and the book, it was a real surprise in that respect. Uh, this is not a screed, it's not a leaflet. It's the most thoughtful discussion of what this new weapon system represents as a danger to world peace. Uh, and it's, uh, it, we need that kind of discussion. It's very good. The way the book is structured, it's a, not, it won't take up your whole week. Uh, but the reason I say it's an organizing tool, I can't believe anyone would read this book and not be impressed with the danger we face with this weapon system. And it's a West weapon system that has been glorified. Uh, the President of the United States wants to take ownership of it. Uh, he recently said, no, he calls out the targets. And Rambo Obama on this one. And the thing that's supposed to be marvelous about this weapon is American lives don't have to be lost. It's the answer to the great concern since the Vietnam War. How do you have an imperial adventure without sacrificing any of your own? Mm. And it's been the search for a technological solution. Now, we should have been pre-warned about technological solutions, because after all, the bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki were, in fact, technological marvels that were supposed to cut down the loss of American lives. The fact that hundreds of thousands of fishermen and their children uh, died uh, was not even noted very much. So one of the points this book makes is beware the appeal of technology and the new weapon. And the book reminds us all too painfully of all of the collateral damage, uh, all of the assassination, the assassination from the sky, the irresponsibility. It takes you through the world of people using their joysticks only a few years away from playing violent video games, now ideally suited to play these video games, picking out targets of thousands of miles, 8,000 miles away. And yet, there is something very eerie about it that I did not realize until I read the book. And, and you capture there that, in fact, I thought you know, one of the big dangers was, of course, you don't smell the death. You're not there. You don't see the destruction. But there's an irony in this. That the people playing with these joysticks are actually observing the people they're going to kill for days sometimes. And they see that there's children in the group. They see that they may be doing something else. And they actually have mental problems as a result. There's a strain as a result. It's a very weird job to commute to. So I think what, what uh, is done in this book, and I'll get you to summarize it, but what I found was so powerful is this, first of all, the clearest description of these weapons, where they came from, why we want to have them, and the fact is, a compelling point in the book, is these weapons do not require high technology. They don't require a massive industrial system to produce. In fact, 50 countries in the world now are on the way or have them. And they come in all sizes and shapes. They can be very small, they can be much larger. Uh, and they are weapons not only of the physical destruction, but they also eavesdrop, they destroy privacy, they can overwhelm communities, and so forth. The book lays this all out in great detail, the consequence. And what it really represents is ushering in a new kind of warfare that is supposed to be acceptable to the people back home, <laughs> even though it's more destructive in many ways because there's drones that are going all the time, terrorizing people elsewhere. But the book is also very good in talking about blowback, and that, in fact, these weapons are now being used increasingly in our own country. They can actually be used against an occupied movement. First eavesdrop, and then what have you. They can be used on the border, which is here as a push. And then, just when you think you're really depressed, <laughs> hearing all this, 
the great thing about this book is it provides an answer to, I know what, a question that will come up in this audience, what can we do about it? And the great thing is the voice changes in this book halfway, just when you're all bummed out, you're fearful. Here we have the activist who's gone around the world. First of all, the observer who's seen what these weapons do to people around the world, to families, to young people, and she will talk about that in a compelling way as we just did before. Uh, but also, she's in touch with activists all around the world that say, no, we don't want these weapons. We recognize the danger. We're concerned about it. And in the end of the book, you really have a clash between Eisenhower's military-industrial congressional complex of people who want these weapons. There's actually a drone lobby, much bigger at this point, I guess, than the Progressive Caucus. Uh, there are people who consider themselves liberals who are on the side of having more of these wonderful weapons. And there's a growing recognition throughout the world that we have let loose a incredibly destructive anti-human weaponry that is irresponsible in its design, particularly when you get to the last chapter and you discover you don't even need humans to push the joystick. Uh, these things can totally be done in a robotic, totally human manner without any consequence. So that's my long-winded way of saying you should buy this book. We will run a couple of chapters on Truth Day. We just made the deal over there. And uh, I'm very committed uh, to getting an audience uh, for this book. And so I'll turn it over to to tell us what it's really all about.